Thank you for joining this lesson. We're going to discuss cathode rays. State one property of cathode rays. There are many properties of cathode rays, but just to list a few, we know that uh, cathode rays are charged. And now that they are charged, and evidence of this is that they can be deflected, or they are deflected. They are deflected by both magnetic, by both magnetic and electric fields. And electric fields. This is an evidence that they are charged. Again, yeah, they are charged because they're just a stream of moving electrons. It's just a beam of electrons. So, you know, electrons are negatively charged. So you can even have an expected deflection by the fields mentioned. Again, we all know that uh, they travel in a straight line. Travel in a straight line. Straight line. This can be evidenced by the fact that when an object is placed, an opaque object is placed on the path of cathode rays, a shadow is cast on a screen. That means they are traveling just like light on a straight line. Cathode rays possess energy. We also know that uh, cathode rays cause some uh, substances to Florence or rather to glue. So those are a few of the properties of cathode rays. You can visit your notes and deliver more. Explain clearly the function of the grid in the cathode ray oscilloscope. So in the CRO, we have the grid and we are told to clearly explain its function. The first thing we should do before explaining the function is to state this function. So the function of the CRO's grid is to regulate to regulate the brightness on the screen to regulate brightness on the screen the same can be stated as this one uh, determines the intensity determines the intensity determines the intensity of the cathode rays of the cathode rays yeah as they reach the as they reach the screen because uh, the cathode rays which are just electrons pass through the grid and now the state of the grid at the time of the passing of this cathode rays will determine the many or the little, the intensity or the less intensity of the cathode rays as they pass. Therefore, we have to explain how this function is achieved. And we say that uh, when the grid is made more negative, when made more negative, you know, this is another meaning. When we say more negative, we mean uh, less positive. And when they are more negative, since electrons are also negative, then few of them will be attracted. Since the grid is more negative, electrons, which are also negative, few of them will be attracted. So less electrons are allowed to pass less electrons pass hence little brightness little brightness on the screen but now on the other side when it is made less negative to mean more positive it will mean more electrons will get attracted and hence, a brighter spot on the screen will be observed. Let us look at um, the second question here. We've been told that uh, figure 7 
shows a display of an AC signal on the CRO screen. So this is uh, the display. It means uh, this one now is the main position. Then we are told uh, given that the time base setting, which is now the horizontal axis setting, is 100 milliseconds per division, and the Y gain sensitivity is 25 volts per division. Determine part one, the peak voltage. How do we get the peak voltage? Peak voltage is usually given by the amplitude multiplied by the Y gain setting. Y gain setting or rather the Y gain sensitivity. So in this case, we are having an amplitude of from the mean position, we just count the complete divisions up to the topmost point. So from this mean position, we are having a one, two, three, or even from the mean position to the lowest point, we are still having three divisions. Therefore, it is three divisions times 25 volts per division. And this will give us 75 volts as the peak voltage. Remember, CRO can be used as a voltmeter. So peak voltage will be determined like that. The next question, we are told to determine the frequency of the wave. Now, when we consider the wave, we are having a a complete oscillation ending at this point. That means we are having a one oscillation and a half displayed. And now we know very well that uh, from here to where the one and a half oscillations are ending, they are mm -hmm, one, two, three divisions. We have three divisions, three divisions, for one and a half oscillations or other cycles one and a half complete cycles again we can even consider the divisions in a complete cycle we can say we have a for this complete cycle we have only one two two divisions for one cycle yeah two divisions for one cycle so there is something we call period, periodic time, and that is time taken for this signal to cover a complete oscillation. Therefore, in the two divisions, if the time base setting is saying 100 milliseconds per division, then it means in the one cycle, or rather one oscillation, the time, time, periodic time, is going to be two divisions times we have 100 milliseconds per division. This is going to be 200 milliseconds. 200 milliseconds. So periodic time is usually given by the number of divisions. Number of divisions in a cycle times the time base setting the time base setting. So we are saying in a complete cycle, we are having only two divisions multiplied by the time base setting is 100 milliseconds. So this gives us 200 milliseconds. So the periodic time can be converted now to seconds because these are milliseconds by dividing by a thousand. This will give us 0 0.2. seconds so the periodic time is 0 0.2 seconds and we should know that a uh, frequency is usually given by the reciprocal of period so frequency is going to be 1 out of 0 0.2 and this is going to be 1 out of 0 0.2 this is equal to 5 frequency is given in arts so this will be the frequency of the signal.
above. That is how we use the display to calculate peak voltage and frequency. We are also told to state a reason why magnetic fields are preferred to electric fields in deflecting the beam of electrons in a CRT, the cathode ray tube television set. This is because magnetic fields magnetic fields give the beam a bigger deflection a bigger deflection than the electric field or the electric fields. So magnetic fields cause a bigger deflection on the beam Mm, the beam of electrons, rather the cathode. The cathode rays are deflected more by magnetic fields which are stronger than electric fields. That means a, a bigger field of view can be used even with a short tube.